Would you like to know a technique that you can use to determine within just a matter of a few seconds if a company is potentially undervalued and possibly a good company to buy stock or trade options in without having to run all kind of formulas? In this video, that's exactly what I show you how to do. A couple months ago, I shared a video on my channel here about how to calculate the intrinsic value of a company. It went into great detail about exactly how to do that calculation using the Ben Graham model. I know a lot of you lead very busy lives. You just don't have the time to sit down and calculate the intrinsic value of every company that you're considering trading stock or options in. So what I'm about to show you is a possible shortcut for that. Let me first lay out some ground rules though. If you want to use this technique to find potential opportunities to trade options in and to buy stock in your favorite companies, you first have to do a little bit of homework ahead of time and make sure that your company is stable. And what do I mean by that? Let me briefly show you two trades I did today. This is by no means a trade suggestion. Rather, I'm showing you this because I want to show you how I use the trick that I'm going to share with you to help me find a trade that I did today. Now, you're going to be watching this video at least a month after I film it, so I have no idea how these positions are going to turn out. For all I know, the market may implode and these positions may go against us in a big way. But if you're curious about whether that happens or not and what happened to this position, watch my monthly cash flow video series. You'll see how I handled this option position as well as all the other ones we trade in our main option trading account. Here are the two trades I did today. First, every month I take at least 10% of the cash flow we received from trading options and buy stock outright with it. Here are the 10 stocks that I bought today in my outright stock ownership account. This account is geared towards buying companies that I plan to hold forever as long as nothing bad happens to them. It focuses on receiving dividends and owning companies that pay an increasing dividend. And it also focuses on solid, consistently profitable companies that might not pay dividends, but I think have a good potential for future growth. Notice in the blue rectangle up top that I bought one share of Price T Row Group, ticker symbol T-R-O-W in this account. I'll call it T Row. Now you see another trade I did today in the same company, but in my main ops trading account. I sold the September 16th, 120 cash secure put option in T Row. That option expires in 45 days. When we did this option trade, we pocketed right at $450. But why did I decide to do this trade? First, let me tell you that I didn't do any super complicated Ben Graham calculation to determine the intrinsic value of T Row today. As a matter of fact, even though I looked at about 75 potential stocks to trade today, I didn't run intrinsic value calculations on any of them, at least not today. However, I had already researched all those companies, and more specifically, T Row, to the point where I knew that if the opportunity presented itself, I was willing to buy it outright based on its history and to trade options in it if it was at a good technical location that I liked. If we go to my Seeking Alpha page, which by the way, I've used them for years and I really enjoy and like their service. I'm actually an affiliate for them. So they've offered to give my viewers an awesome discount if they sign up for an account. So if you'd like to get an awesome discount on a Seeking Alpha membership, check out the link at the description down below. But if you go to Seeking Alpha, you can get all kind of financial information on pretty much any company that you're interested in. Here you see that when we go to Seeking Alpha, if I type in the ticker symbol T Row and we go to Finance, we have access to all kinds of financial information. Now I'm not going to go into great detail here because that's not what this video is about. This video is about showing you a shortcut to doing this every time that you're considering a trade. But I want to show you first where you can find all the financial information that you would need to run on companies to see first of all ahead of time if they are a company that you feel comfortable trading in. And once I show you this, I'm going to show you where you can go to on here so you can use the shortcuts I'm about to share with you to decide if you want to do a trade in your company. Again, I can't stress this enough. Please make sure the companies you're considering to trade in are strong and it doesn't have too much debt. That's income is increasing for the most part and it's a financially solid company and investment. You can do that by going through all the different financials that you see here. Here you see that you can compare its revenues over the past 10 years. In the red box, you can review its gross profit. Down the orange box, you can review the history of its operating income. You can compare its basic earnings per share over the previous years, the diluted earnings per share, its earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, amortization. So what I'm saying is do all those things ahead of time. Spend some time and become familiar with the financials of the companies that you're looking to trade in. Websites like Seeking Alpha make it really fast and easy to do that. And once you've done that, if you feel comfortable with a company, then we can begin to consider using some of the shortcuts I'm going to show you now. One thing I like to look at when it comes to dividend paying companies is how much their cash flow they're paying out to their owners in the form of dividends. You see that calculation here in the blue box under payout ratio. The payout ratio tells us the portion of T Rose earnings that it pays out to its owners in the form of dividends. It's expressed as a percentage of its total earnings. In our 10% outright stock ownership account, 
If it's a dividend paying company, which most of them are, I also want to see that those dividends have a history of growing or going up. Here you see that T. Rowe's five year dividend growth rate is over 15%. In the orange box to the right of that, you see that it has been growing its dividends for 36 years. That is a long history of dividend growth and it's something else that I like to see. It tells us that management spends a lot of time and effort to make sure that their cash flows remain strong enough to pay ever increasing dividends to their owners. To do that, they have to run a consistently profitable business. That is what has enabled T. Rowe to grow that dividend for 36 years in a row. And when you think back about the history over the past 36 years, there's a lot of things that have happened. If you have a company that's been able to grow its dividend for 36 straight years, that's a company that might be worth considering and looking into further. And then up top in the red box, you see that Seeking Alpha gives you its grades when it comes to dividends. Notice that it rates all of them at least a B, and three out of the four different grades, including dividend safety, growth, and consistently, those are all rated an A. I like that. If you go over the valuation tab, you can now compare T. Rowe to the sector that it's in. In the blue box, you see T. Rowe's numbers. In the purple box, you see the sector median numbers. Then in the red box, Seeking Alpha does an automatic calculation for you. They make it really easy for you so that you can compare T. Rowe against the sector that it's in. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. You can then calculate your own intrinsic value or use any kind of valuation model that you like. But once you've done all that and you get to know a company, you know that's one that you'd feel comfortable owning or trading options in, that's when this video kicks in. You see, once you know it's a good company, then you keep an eye on the news, make sure that nothing bad is happening, make sure the earnings are remaining stable and hopefully growing, make sure that the expenses don't shoot way up. You see, as long as nothing out of the ordinary happens to your company, what I'm about to show you can save you a whole lot of time when you're looking to do trades. There are a couple things that I look at, especially when it comes to dividend paying companies that help me determine if it's probably a good time to dig a little deeper. If nothing has fundamentally changed with the company, one thing I like to watch is the dividend yield. If you see a spike in the dividend yield, it generally means that the stock price has either dropped or that the company has paid a special dividend. If a company pays a special dividend, then they either did a deal and sold off some assets, and have a bunch of extra cash to pay out to its owners, or they just have a bunch of extra cash for running their business efficiently and they can't think of a better way to invest it, so they give it to you, the owners. Generally though, a spike in dividend yield is driven by a decline in the stock price. That's partly what we see here with T. Rowe. T. Rowe's price has dropped from a high at the end of last year of around $225 down to the close today of $120.67. That's a little over $100 per share and a 45% price drop. Since they haven't decreased their dividend, it only makes sense that we're going to see a spike in the dividend yield when the price drops. And when I see that spike, if it's reaching a level that it previously stopped going up at, that's when I begin to get interested. Part of the reason for the spike is that the stock price has crashed. I drew a blue line here showing the highs of the yield, which generally corresponds to the lower stock values that year for T. Rowe. Notice that we are still about 30% higher yield than the highest yield over the past several years. That caught my eye and is one reason why I decided to do a trade today in T. Rowe. Another quick check you can do is to keep your eye on the price to earnings. Similar to dividend, it's greatly affected by the company's stock price changes. Here you see the chart of the past five years of T. Rowe's price to earnings. When that price to earnings plummets, I begin to get interested. I dig in a little deeper to see if there's a good reason why the price to earnings has declined so much, or if it's just driven by investors' emotions. With Tiro's history of being a profitable, growing, having plenty of cash on hand, and being a consistently profitable, stable company, when I see a plunge this deep in price to earnings, even below the virus crash back in 2020, several weeks ago, when that happens, I begin to get really interested. My reason for sharing this video with you is not to say that you should only look at these two things, dividend yield and price to earnings. You absolutely shouldn't just look at those two things. You need to know what kind of company you're trading in. You need to know if management is running the company well or not. And you want to make sure that they are consistently growing their earnings and don't have a ton of debt. But once you've done all that, a quick and easy way to look for opportunities is just to keep an eye on those two things, the dividend yield and the price to earnings. When you see the dividend yield spike and or price to earnings crash, it should pique your interest to dig a little deeper to see if there's something wrong with the company, has something recently changed. But if everything is going fine with the company and investors are just scared of a recession or a lawsuit or something like that, then it may be a signal telling you that you could potentially do a good trade in this company by buying the stock outright or trading options in it. If you'd like to receive alerts when we do trades similar to the ones I showed in this video, consider the benefits of becoming a patron 
down at the link in the description below. If you'd like to see exactly how to calculate the intrinsic value of a stock using the Ben Graham model, including how to put it into a spreadsheet so it'll be easy to use for future reference, check out the video at the link above and the description below entitled, How to Calculate the Intrinsic Value of a Stock. In that video, I make that formula calculation as easy as possible for you so you can use it to calculate the intrinsic value of companies that you're considering trading in. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.